start the yeah. broadcast and sh get it on the thing. We're gonna go get this going. Oops. <clears throat> All right. So it's loading, so everything on the mm -hmm. I was just saying it's loading up. I think oh, okay. it's you're not getting you're not getting any uh background from my end, right? Nope. Mm -mm. I mean as far as the noise and yeah, no, no, I don't hear nothing. Okay, cool. You like I said, sit down. No. <laughs> 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 I know how it is. Okay. I think that. Yeah, it says webinar is now streamed live on Facebook. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. Um, all right, hold on. Let me add on Isaiah. And then okay. Go. Mm -hmm. Hey. Um, hey, can you hear us? I can. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ah, shalom, 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 shalom. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna share it to my page real quick, and then we we can get started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let me do the same. Right here. <sighs> Okay. All right. Done and done. So I got the heat on, and I'm not ashamed to say I have the heat on. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, it's actually not funny. What am I laughing about? Um. Okay. So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, the topic for today is Netflix and chill, <laughs> <laughs> dating in the black community. Um. And the title, like I was telling uh, Zebulon before we got on, is really, uh, I think that phrase is tongue in cheek. I'm not, I don't really think that we should call it that, but it's just <laughs> like, it's such an, uh, it's such an enigma, I think, anyway, just dating period. So, yeah. um, especially, so I think it's an enigma um, in, a, in a communities of people who may not necessarily subscribe to a specific faith, <laughs> but I think it's even more of a curious thing for those who prefer best to follow the Bible as well. I think they don't know what, what it is either. Or even if there's even some question about is, is it even the valid thing to be doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and read the um, the synopsis and then we can just jump into it. Uh, so it says, if you're not married, expectations of the single life, including a, a healthy dating routine. But what exactly does it mean to date someone? Should there be a goal in dating? Why or why not? And what constitutes appropriate and inappropriate behavior in this process? So those are the questions. So I think the the first, did anybody want to say anything before we jump into the question part of it or any thoughts before we start? What do you mean as far as the, uh, the, 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 the title itself? Or yeah, you... yeah, just anything before we get into the actual meat of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think even with, the, even with that term Netflix and show, I mean, <laughs> I think no, no. I mean, listen. I listen. I, I get it. I, you know, I get it. Because, you know, I think all of us, and I think maybe even including Brother Isaiah. I'm not sure um, what age bracket that he's in, but those of us who right. been around for a minute, we understand. You know, times move on, and we figure out new ways to express the same concepts. So right. you know, but I think in this generation, and I guess every, I guess every generation says that about the new generation. <laughs> right. <laughs> But, but it, it, this generation has has found, I think, one of the best ways to, I guess, legitimize for them. Um, I, I guess maybe because the I, you know those of us who are like forty yeah. and up, we come from a time. I think we were part of that that we were on the borderline of that last generation that actually had respect and honor for the, you know, for the sanctity of relationships and marriage. Right, right. And then on the other side, we were like 
we were at the beginning of the breakdown of the black families. Those of us who were born in the, the mid early seventies, we were witnessing the end of one era of good, you know, wholesome, at least generally speaking, marriage. And then when the seventies came in, we saw the complete break, the, the, the beginnings of the breakdown of the black family. So we were, we're in a, we were in a very weird space. Um, but we come from a time that, you know, we kind of call things what they were. If you were a whore, you were a whore. <laughs> if you were a whoremonger, you pretty much were a whoremonger. Right. You know, you, you're, you know if, if you're a prostitute, you're, you know, whatever, you're a gigolo, you're a gigolo. Like, like, these names were very specific and you were known by what you did. That's what you do. And it was, not, and, and it was a, sh a certain shame to that. Right. Of course, one of the one of the best ways to legitimize evil is to alter the language. When you change the language, you can pretty much let anything pass as good. I mean, Run DMC said it best when he talked when they were talking uh, Peter Piper when they were talking about their DJ. Yeah. They, when they were referring to him as bad, he said, "Not bad meaning bad, but bad meaning good." Yeah. And you know, and it's and that's such a simple. It's like, ah, oh, come on, it's just hip hop. But it's like, but, yeah. but when you think about the concept, the bedrock of our culture has been to what? To overturn the general sensibilities of a thing and say, you know what? We're going to call it the opposite of what it actually is. So when, we, so when you, when you, uh, when you re would recite a great lyric or a great song, we didn't say it was a good song. We would call it back in the 90s. We'd say, yo, that song was wicked. Right. That's a good point. And when and, you know when you sit back now, now, I'm saying that of course as a 44 year old man. Yeah. When I was in my twenties, I didn't get it. But then I'm like sitting back and you're like, why do we say it's wicked? Right, right, right. Like, like how do you extract anything good out of a term like that? So yeah. I think we become very cognizant of the power of words and how we can say certain things and it will strip a thing of its evil or of its good. So when you look at the term, the, the saying Netflix and chill. You, you know, you, we understand what it is. It's basically you calling up the female like, yo, listen, I'm coming through and I'm going to smash that. <laughs> I mean, that's just, you know, that, I mean, just being very clear about it. That's exactly what's going down. We are not going there to watch net, a net, like a nice Netflix movie, maybe two movies, and just chill out. And then after the movies are over, okay, sis, you know, that was a very good night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it moving. See you tomorrow. That's right. not what you... You, 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 that's not what this generation is going about doing. Right. They're going in a smash. That, that's the whole point. And so what they've done is they've legitimized the whoredom. They've leg we've, you know, this generation has legitimized the whoredom and the hormone. And so now it's not a bad thing. It's like, no, you know, just have a little Netflix and chill. And that's where I believe you begin to strip a thing of its evil. Now it doesn't seem so evil. It's like, ah, oh, no, we're just gonna do this. And it's like, no, those of us who are cognizant of righteousness, we're like, uh, no. What you're saying is, I'm coming over to make this daughter of Zion a whore. I'm gonna treat her like a whore. I'm gonna have sex with her. I'm gonna have my way with her, do whatever I want, whatever I want to do with her, I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna keep it moving. That's what I'm coming to do. Yeah. So when you put it in that way, you're like, yo, that is some evil. Yeah. Right? But when you say, oh, no, nah, it's just a little Netflix and chill or Hulu and chill or whatever, whatever streaming service you're dealing with, the, <laughs> the, the idea is chill. And, you know, and even that term, you know, it, it, the one thing that you're not going to be doing, we're not going to chill. We're going to be doing a lot of things, but chilling is not one of them. Right. <laughs> it's, you know, so it, it's, I think just starting off with the subject, I think there's a lot of, and I think you said this earlier before the um, the uh, the actual recording started yeah. about um, the ambiguity yeah. of not only the terms but just the concept of dating in itself. It, it's so ambiguous. There's no clear definition, and that's the reason why when you go from one person to the next, you don't really know what you're dealing with. Right. right. You just, you, you, it's basically it's it's like a dice game. You know, you just like okay, well, let me just roll these dice and. See how it drops. Mm. You don't really know. So, uh, Isaiah, did you, did you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, this is interesting because um, uh, uh, um, 
Brother Zeb, um, Chief Zeb, um, I'm not necessarily, you know, in y'all in, in your age group, I would presume. Um, so I've come up in a, in a in an age where these things were viewed reviewed by both men and female as uh, i.e. acceptable. Um, so it's funny because uh, we go through these shifts where what used to be, you know, quote unquote taboo have now become uh, generalized or just understood as i.e. culture, which, you know, I said this before, I feel as though we need to kind of uh, set standards for what we want to deem as culture. Um, so, I'm sorry, socially become acceptable. Um, even looking at, you know, how I was raised, uh, it would be times where, you know, I would hop in even moments I kind of cherish even, um, you know, growing up and looking back on because it was fun. We would hop in the car, you know, well, let's say like my uncle or something like that. Shout out to my uncle. Um, we would get in the car and he would drive around. And, you know, the idea was kind of the quote fun, but it was like, hey, yo, go holla at that guy. Or, oh, or go talk to her or, or something like that. And, um, you know, it was kind of a thing with, you know, how many bodies kind of, you know, I don't want to say it like that, but kind of put under your belt. Even though that's not what he was doing with it, but you, that was, that was the narrative, you know, speaking, I was a kid in like the early 90s, you know what I mean? Well, so, I hear a feedback on my end as well. Um... I don't know. Are you guys getting an echo? Yeah, and, and I actually had my mic muted, but I was still hearing an echo in the back. Yeah, I wonder. Maybe if I turn my uh, volume down, is that better? Well, I just unmuted my mic to see if it was me, but did you still hear it? I don't hear anything. Okay, I hear it now. Maybe it's me. I'm muted. Okay. Okay. Um. Sorry about that, people. We were working through the technical difficulties. Um, so as I was stating, um, socially it's become uh, acceptable. So when we think of the term Netflix and chill, I automatically just go back to uh, it being called uh, a booty call. Or it'd be, um, as people say now, you know, that 3 a.m. text, uh, uh, what, is, what is the acronym? W-Y-D, what you doing? You know, um, and uh, it's kind of, you know, that's just kind of what it is. It's just kind of putting a spin on it, as uh, as Zeb said. You know, so um, looking at it, you know, the ideal or what is defined as dating or what is defined as courting or what is defined as being in a relationship, those standards, when you look all the way back, you know, even when probably, let's say, when my grandparents were younger, you know, it was certain things that they didn't do. And as time kind of pushed forward, you kind of see that, um, well, this is what the next generation was, which was a little rebellious towards the first is going right. to do. And you kind of see that rebellion get a little bit deeper with the next generation. Right. And then you see it a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. So as time go on, we get further and further away with what was originally deemed as good, wholesome, righteous, to a little more taboo, you know, a little more, well, let's accept this because this is what the culture is leaning towards. Now, I remember my grandmother telling me when I was first dealing with, you know, dating young people, you know, don't get too attached to one person. You know, what was she, what did she used to say? Sow your royal oats. <laughs> and I was like, what? That sounds crazy. Yeah. You know? But I, I mean, ideally, I know she didn't mean go out and be no hoe, you know, because that was talked about and talked against in my household, at least. That's right. how you treat women. But um, ideally, it was, you know, go ahead and enjoy life while you're young. You got plenty of time to go and get married. You know what I mean? But hmm. looking at things from a biblical perspective, um, we gonna, I'm going to say intercourse for, uh, you know, sake of the show. But, um, you know, involving yourself in that is not something, well, I, I, I feel is not something that should be done in the dating phase. And that's kind of, um, 
uh, um, realization I kind of came to within this journey of finding myself and, um, you know, kind of seeing who I am and what morals I feel are deemed as, as um, you know, necessary and, and kind of that change of becoming an adult because uh, I realized intercourse does nothing but complicate a lot of things and it blinds you to a lot of things, but I don't want to jump ahead. So that's a fact. Um, I'm going to stop and, and, you know, before I get ahead of my show self with the show. Yeah. No, that's, that's all good. That's good feedback. I, um, I wanted to, to offer this because um, I definitely agree each generation thinks that the older people think that their time was better and young people think, I'm going to do something different. You know, they kind of think that, you know, that whatever they're doing is really amazing and dramatic. But um, I will say that with where we're going now, things are a lot more transparent. I do believe, like you said, Zebulon, that people was hoes back in the day. It's not a new phenomenon, right? right? And I also will just say, just speaking from what I've heard from my elders um, in my immediate family, um, and the stories I heard about previous generation, um, that a lot of stuff was happening, but it was just real quiet. So it wasn't that grandma wasn't hanging with this dude and that dude. Right. <laughs> it just wasn't. She was, she was going to glorify herself in that. And I think that's the difference. And that's what we see, uh, like you mentioned earlier, Zebulon, the language changing because if it's, if it's out in the open, then what's the secrecy? You might as well just, just like the term, this is probably a bad example, but um, I think people use this when they say the word nigga. They say, well, you can't say a nigga if you white. We can say it. We've reclaimed it. Or if you talk to somebody in the, the gay community, they'll say that, you know, they can call each other fag or Right. And it's cool. So, so just even taking those, taking that language and reclaiming it makes it okay. So I agree, um, Isaiah, about um, you know us taking these uh, uh, about the cultural aspect of it. You know, just kind of making these things normal. But so with having, with us having said all that, I'm really curious about what what you do then. What is appropriate? Not appropriate as far as behavior, but what is a single person to do? What should they be doing? Because of course you can't. And this is, you know, we believe in, on this particular platform, Love Language Roundtable, we do believe in getting back to the uh, 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 source of everything. So we, we profess to believe in the Bible and that's kind of where we come from. So we're not gonna necessarily be, and, I'm, and I, I don't speak for y'all brothers, but I'm gonna just, cause I think I know y'all. Um, we don't look at uh, sex as a casual thing. It's nothing casual. And I think whether or not you, Believe in the Bible or not, if you are honest with yourself, you would say it's not something that you just do and walk away from. But that's just what I think. So, but I will say for the for the people that might be listening that are single, what is appropriate behavior for them to do? Because if their goal, if they desire to one day be in a marriage, I mean, what would you say to somebody who is single about using this particular time? Um, what should their focus be? If if it's not dating, and now now uh, if you think it's dating, I'm curious to see you know even that like what is dating then, or is that even a concept that is even? Yeah, you know, I, I just recently I had a I had a, a a conversation both in inbox and over the phone um, with a brother and a sister. We we were um we were just kind of exchanging some thoughts about. Um, the, and it and doesn't have anything to do with the, this particular show, but the, the, the subject was polygamy, and okay. mm -hmm. and they were and, and they were kind of asking me like what my position was because they were like, well, you know, you don't seem to be really adamant adamant towards it or adamant adamant against it. Like, like where do you stand? And I said that I'm for I'm adamantly for anything that is uh, that is permissible. In the laws of the Most High. Right, right. Now, with, now with that said, yeah, not everything may work for a person at any given time. Some things are lawful, but they may not work in a particular scenario. So, for instance, it is completely, um, it's completely lawful in the Torah to eat pigeons. <laughs> right. <laughs> completely lawful. Yeah, yeah. It's a clean animal. In fact, it's right. that you offer up for an offering. Yeah, so yeah. There's nothing wrong with eating a pigeon. Mm -hmm. Now, me being a New York City, you know, <laughs> born in New York City, not exactly 
<laughs> interested in busting down a pigeon. I, I'm just right. not. <laughs> I'm right. like, I, I can't see myself wringing its neck and like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep this in. Can't really do that. I, I, but of course, if the circumstances allowed it, we know that, well, I can do it if need be. And, and, and I wouldn't have to repent for it. It would be like, no, it's, it's completely uh, permissible. Um, same thing with some people with eating locusts. It's lawful. I've had locusts. Excellent tasting stuff. Excellent. Really? Interesting. Excellent. Well, once you get the thorax off and everything, it's like it, it looks like a little, it's like a light brownish flesh. It almost looks like in the shape of a bean, the actual, the abdomen part. Oh, really? It's wow. very tasty. Wow. However, I understand that everybody's not gonna, everybody's not busting down their doors trying to get some locusts. It just, it depends on a person's taste and will it work for you. Same thing with, you know, with, uh, you know, with the idea of dating and stuff like that. And I told the, the you know, the brother and the sister, I said, listen, because the one, the one sister was like that she doesn't believe in dating. Mm. And, I, you know, before I even, re, you know, responded to that, I had to first sit, sit back and say, okay, well, what does she mean? Does she mean, I mean, is she opposed to the process or is she opposed to the term? Mm -hmm. okay. And because you know, and, and I and I expressed it to them that hey, I said, listen, it's the same thing with polygamy. When people hear the term polygamy, they immediately start, oh, oh, they, you know, and, and there's like this immediate backlash of it. But I'm like, well, well, we've always kind of accepted polygamy. I mean, young girls were notorious for having two or three guys that they were seeing at the same time, whatever the case, it was called something different. Same thing with young men. I got a girlfriend over here, you know, I'm dealing with this girl over here. And we even had it in songs in the 70s, songs that celebrated that nonsense, saying what? I don't care about the mother girls, just be good to me. <laughs> so there's a culture that we came out of that was basically, you know, we understood that, yes, there's other people, whatever, although how twisted, it, it may have been a little twisted, yeah. But the concept was there. So my thing was, what I asked her, I said, well, what exactly are you opposed to? Are you opposed to the idea of dating or are you opposed to the, the infrastructure of it? Like, what is it that you're in opposition to? And what the sister realized after she thought about it was that she was opposed to the term dating. And... I, what I did was, you know, in order to give her an understanding of that, I said, well, consider this. Would you go into any relationship without knowing anything about the person? Yeah. Do you believe that, do you believe in marriage at first sight? They actually have a, a show on cable about that. Mm -hmm. um, marriage at first sight. I think, that, I think that's what it's called. I see the provider says um, nodding or whatever. I, I think that's what it's called, but would you do that? Would you see somebody and be like, you know, that's a handsome brother. Hey, bro, let's talk marriage. Yeah, no. Nobody is going to do that. Yeah, right. So what exactly are we saying? Then? Are we saying that are we against the terminology dating or are we against the infrastructure? Now, if you're against the term, then let's just change the term, just like we change the term to everything else. Right. Netflix and chill and all that stuff we were just talking about. We switch up terminology then. Well, Let's call it something else then. But if you're talking about the infrastructure, Proverbs makes that very clear that with anything that you deal with, and even in the law, that there has to be a certain level of circumspect when you approach anything. That's part of judgment, to render uh -huh. righteous judgment. In order to judge something, you have to have the intel on the scenario before you. Right. Before you can judge a person, you have to know what that person is, what that person represents, what's their backstory, what's their, you know, all of these different things in order for you to make a righteous and complete um, uh, um, um, decision on how you're going to move forward with any person. And that's just with anybody, man, woman, friendship, marriage, whatever it is. So to say that we don't agree with 
oh, we don't deal with dating. My, oh, but I, I, that's my thing. My thing is I posit that, okay, let's just drop the term and let's call it something else. And I think, and, and, I, and I'm not going to do it now because I, obviously I want uh, Brother Isaiah and you to, to, to give your spill as well, but sure. I have something that I wanted to read on that subject and it's coming from a community that probably has, that has practiced these concepts, probably the best that I've ever seen of any African-American group, period. And who has actually been successful in these things? So, but I'm just, but just, just like like the brother Isaiah said, I don't want to get too ahead of myself um, in the conversation. But I just think that the term dating, maybe it's antiquated. Maybe maybe, maybe we don't really feel comfortable with that term. But that's fine. We didn't feel comfortable with the term God. So then we, what did we do? We went into the Hebrew and we found Yah. Right. Right. Or to be politically, you know, correct, higher. Whatever term we use. One yeah. thing, one thing we, we went into the scripts and we found that which was right and exact. So now we don't have to say God. Mm. But, but it's still the same power. <laughs> so, right. and I think it's the same thing with dating. Like, okay, if we don't agree with the term, fine. Let's chuck it and move to something that's a bit more descriptive of what we're talking about. Okay. Y'all mind if I chime in next? Absolutely. Yeah. Got something to say? Go ahead, Isaiah. Okay. Um, this is an interesting concept. Um, I don't think people have issue with so much the term. I think it's more so the actions behind the term that a lot of people have uh, trouble with. Or um, as different people are involved, what what it actually means to be dating um from a biblical standpoint although we don't really see a lot of instances of dating it's kind of um this is i don't i as far as i know let's put it that way as far as i know i don't really see too many um examples of it um or whether it's called dating or courting or you know getting to know each other or as they say nowadays, talking, <laughs> which is even more vague. Right. <laughs> um, I feel as though they all kind of fit under that same umbrella. It's just what you doing while you are in these aspects. So in my mind, um, I have like stages to uh, IE in a relationship. Because this is all what it all boils down to. Even friendships can be forms of relationships. So let's say relationships is that umbrella term, and then you have under it talking, dating, courting, being friends, being married, and, you know, some outlier terms, um, quote-unquote buddies, and, you know, other variants out there. I, 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 I skipped over, but you can fill in the word that comes before buddies. Indeed. Um, the main thing is kind of defining the actions involved, right? So um, as uh, Tamar kind of, I believe she kind of alluded to earlier, you know, um, on this platform, I think we all share that same understanding as far as um, sexual intercourse not being uh something that you can kind of just walk into and walk out of right um i've known a lot of friends a lot of people i've been associated with through life you know try that and every time i've seen it, although they won't agree with it some of them will feel as though you know i may be over analyzing or you know not me or not them rather or walking into that situation, it'd be good. I actually had a long conversation with a group, a large group of people, probably about 14, 15 people who was like, you know, the term goes hitting it and quitting, it, you know, or, or a one night stand type of thing. And each one of those situations, all of them said, well, you know, I can handle it. You know, my most, my emotions aren't involved or right, I, I right. can walk in and walk out and it wouldn't, it wouldn't be nothing. But lo and behold, or they can continue to live within that confine and just be cool where they were at 
lo and behold, some inv- some investment, some emotion, some feeling always got intertwined and then the line started blurring or situation started changing. I don't I personally don't feel I've seen a situation where people could just walk away from it and everybody just be cool in the greens. Most of the time you see people start being friends, et cetera, et cetera. But going back to the action involved, I think sexual intercourse is that 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 um that that main thing you know, that's, um, people kind of use to define, you know, what's their social life or what, what is their status. And I think once we kind of make clear, or even as a community, those who are watching this video, once you make clear where you stand and what you want to do and how you want to interact with each other in that standpoint, that's when you, when the ball kind of begins to move. So uh, we talk about contractual agreements here a lot right. in this show. Right. And I think that's a, a, a real positive way to look at dating. I think that premier conversation, uh, before I even get there, hello. <laughs> before I even. Uh oh. Okay. You want to answer me? Well, here he is. Yes. Hey. Oh, We're busy, girl. You go, out, you go out to the play area? No. Yes. Oh. Go out to the play area. You no. watch them. <laughs> I follow you, Zaki. <laughs> no, she sees, she sees the camera and then she, you know. Mm-hmm. She ready. Mm-hmm. She, she yeah, my dance. apologies for that. It's all good. It's all good. It's, it's lovely to see the young ones. But, um... Uh, what was I saying? Okay, yeah. So um, the the uh, oh man, I, I lost my spot. Um, oh man, pick it back up, I said. All right, here we go. So um, you know, defining what those roles are, whether it be through conversation or something at the beginning phases, is kind of where we stand. Because to me, dating, courting, talking, those aspects are finding if you're compatible with that person. Or right. as uh, Zeb, as you said, um, kind of coming in there and seeing if we're right fit. Like you said, nobody wants to spot somebody on the street and just, okay, we about to go get married without finding that open conversation, you know, or, or, and realizing who each other are, you know, because you might not be a fit with that brother and or sister. You know what I mean? You kind of need to find out what what their social cues are, you know, and other aspects of of who they are and what they're about so um right. i think those things are determined through dating i think where we go wrong without getting ahead of, of the show i think where we go wrong is um kind of blurring the lines of what each of those steps are like a person uh because you're attracted to somebody and you are what i feel is the talking phase getting to know you know, common things about him, you know, right. real shallow, we go head over heels for that person. And then we kind of move them before they're ready to be moved um, into another phase. But I think operating through those phases aren't, isn't a negative thing. I think a lot of people, when they hear dating, they automatically think, and, uh, you know, well, these people are doing X, Y, and Z. When in all actuality, they might be just genuinely getting to know each other. But as you say, when somebody says, oh, let's go, you know, was Netflix and Phil, that term has been synonymous with a booty call. Right. And then ideally, we ain't just Netflix and I'm watching a movie or something like that. There's something um, in between. And if you can eliminate that something in between and be upfront, as Tamar said, be transparent with what's going on, no matter what the uh, social term is at the time, you can kind of decide whether you're choosing to stick in that or not. So I'm going to yield. I know you said you had some things to read. Tamar, I know you might have something to say, so I'm going to go ahead and mute. Uh, I'm going to jump in real quick, Zebulon, before you read that, just to say, too, just... um. Just from the discussion so far, 
uh, about like just the solutions, right? So we see, I mean, I think even just from our conversation, we see that there's a bunch of different ways that you can look at dating and what they it even means. So, um, you know, if you are single, right, taking this opportunity to, um, if you're going to air quote date or whatever the term is, that you use it to really find out um, about yourself primarily. I think dating is a good, I think the positive thing about dating I've never done it, but I'm, I heard, right? <laughs> no, is that you, you, you have the opportunity to, to see what you do and do not like. Um, the, the characteristics that you might, when uh, uh, you mentioned about uh, seeing somebody and being like, oh, they're attractive. I mean, that, that's cool, but now what? So, t- so training yourself to look beyond that and to um, be patient too, I think, um, you know, with excluding the whole romantic involvement, just, uh, Learning more about yourself to see what you will and will not tolerate, um, and because I, I, often I think a, a long time ago we talked about a long time ago we we have been talking about this whole list or having standards or whatever. But it may be that your I think Shema said it. It may be that your standards are you know I ain't gonna say too high. Maybe they're just not realistic. Maybe maybe you want these things, but then when you go through the process, you learn that it's other stuff that has more of an importance than your list or your initial. It's like a it's like a science experiment, okay? You know, you try you try one thing, it don't work. Right. <laughs> you, right. you have changing hypotheses all the time, blah blah. So it's kind of that that same thing. Um, but using it again to, to to learn more about yourself, and then also to uh, assess um, you know whether whether you even ready for anything further, which is which I appreciate that Isaiah said about you know having having a friendship they may have. Um, uh, covenant type language involved, like verbal or, or, or whatnot, and then seeing if you can't even keep your promises about to your friends, then you really shouldn't be thinking no further than that when it comes to like intimate relationships. So I just want to throw that in there. I thought that was interesting. No, right, and he, you know, I said he brought up so you know the, the funny thing is that at first when when, when he began to um uh, to give his platform on the topic, um, I, at first I'm thinking like. Okay, he it almost seems like he's kind of coming from like a different angle from what I was just saying because I was you know saying that the sister was, you know talked about the the term dating and then right. but but he was like well you know no it's not so much the, 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 you know the, the term dating it's what people are doing right but then when I thought about it I said you know as he was saying it I'm like well no actually it's actually both like it it, it it's the it's basically the same tree on a different branch. Because what happens is, is that no matter what term you use, it's still going to boil down to how are these individuals utilizing it. Right. That's you good. Know, and I'm, I'm one of those people, and I actually, I, I learned this from a great elder, um, uh, you know, uh, rest in peace, uh, Elder Ben Ami Ben Israel. He said that the importance of words, the importance of defining and redefining things is of utmost importance because it is when you define or redefine something it changes thought patterns when you change thought patterns you change actions when you change actions you alter culture right so so when i think about these things i get you know in, in that same conversation with the brother and the sister when we were talk, talking about that terminology dating you know and i'm like well yeah well yeah we could say that a term might be antiquated or maybe it's not representing a certain thing that we wanted to represent but we also got to consider that just because someone um sullies or dirties a term doesn't mean that we should you know throw it away and i gave the example of i said well let's take for instance would you name if you had a daughter would you name your daughter jezebel <laughs> and I don't. I, I think maybe a hundred out of a hundred is like, like I, I ain't naming my daughter no Jezebel. I said, right, because what Jezebel is, you know, the quintessential wicked woman, right? <laughs> however, the but however the name Jezebel in Hebrew, Yisbaal, and the name means chaste, untouched by men. Wow. So now we're stuck with this term 
That's a very great name. I mean, right. who would who would argue against having their daughter being named that she's chaste? Right, right. Untouched right. by men. Yes, my daughter's not a whore. She's a Isabel. Yeah. But because of one person mm-hmm. in one scenario in the scriptures, we have casted that that name out of our presence. So now when you hear Jezebel, you think of the worst possible female you could ever meet. <laughs> now I'm not saying that I'm not saying that yes, by all means, let's just name all of our daughters Jezebel. Right. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that you can see how a term can be dirtied or sullied by the action of one scenario and it changes and shifts the culture around it. Mm-hmm. And so when we start talking about dating, I said, well, okay, well, let's scrap the term dating. Let's say courting. Right. And there was still some more kickback to that. Like, oh, well, you know, you know, it, it's it's just how people go about things. And it just that's what made me think about what the, what the brother Isaiah was saying. And I'm like, well, yeah, it doesn't, but it, that's the thing. It doesn't matter in a sense what enough, what other people may do. I mean, you got people who use the scriptures every day to justify madness. Right. Does that mean that we throw the, the scriptures out? Because right. it's used, I mean, are we doing that? Or are we saying, well, no, that's their wickedness. But the truth is still in this book. So, you know, um, I think, like I said, I think it has, you know, that, that, that we have to be very careful with terms and not only these terms, but also we have to, we have to be the, um, the curators, if you will. Mm-hmm. of these terms and these concepts and we have to guard them so that when you have people coming in and trying to redefine certain things to justify some adverse conduct we should be the curators and the and the guardians of that and say oh no oh no my brother or oh, no my sister you're not going to bring that nonsense in here mm-hmm. same thing with polygamy polygamy is a great thing but you're not going to bring, but individuals who, who are already whores and whoremongers, you're not going to bring that in and try to use right. liberty to justify a whore. Like, oh, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that here. You can go do that there, <laughs> but not here. Um, and so, again, the power of words. And I just wanted to read this just a little, a brief portion out of the, and Excellent book. I don't know if you, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure y'all have seen the book before, but. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I've heard about that book before. This is, um, this is, well, the book, it covers a lot of different things, but just, but generally, this was a sister, um, Professor Dixon. She. Hold on, brother. Before you go into reading it, can you say the name of it? I can't see it. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. We want for our we want for our sisters, we want for ourselves. And this particular sister, um, Professor uh, Patricia Dixon, or Patricia Dixon Spear now, because she's married, she um she was in college and she was doing a paper on on polygamy in amongst African Americans or uh, bl- melanated people, we'll just say that. Mm-hmm. Um now of course she did not believe in polygamy. She thought it was the worst thing since the devil. <laughs> so she, <laughs> Um, you know, and, and that's cool. I mean, you know, I mean, but but she goes into the history of it, and, and as she was doing the research, she was going and visiting various um, melanated uh, groups. She went amongst the Ansar group, um, some Egyptian uh, Coptic group, all of the groups who embody some level or, or embody some uh, type of practice of polygamy on whatever level. Um, some Islamic groups and she concluded that the Hebrew Israelites in Demona were the best examples of polygamy in its most in its most um, righteous sense. Mm. She, to the point that she ended up it ended up bringing her into the truth of the Most High. Like she, you know, she was a Christian. And she she saw how things was practiced in this community, and she's like, I didn't even know that polygamy was done like this. The first thing that she saw was that. In a polygamous situation, it is the woman, the, it is the first wife who chooses <laughs> the, the second wife. Mm. 
Interesting. Which, which kind of it changes the dynamic because now, now the decision in the polygamous um, relationship is not the husband just kind of like checking out another sister, like, oh yeah, yeah, I want that, or whatever like that. It's like, no, if we're gonna do this, uh, I'm going to interview this sister. What does she bring to this household? Can she cook? Can she clean? Is she willing to have more children? Is she willing to move her career forward you know, outside of the home? Is she an outside type of wife or is she an in-home type of wife? And the first wife has to be comfortable with that. I need to know that I can work with this sister to build this house up. So of course it changes the dynamic. So this is what the sister Patricia Dixon was going into when she saw how it was done and was like that she's never seen polygamy practice like this and it impressed her. She was like, the women have an active role in how it's going down. It's not just a man saying, yo, I'm taking this woman. Now you get to go, you know, y'all get to know each other. <laughs> it's, it's a different dynamic. And so what she, what she ended up going into, and that's the portion I wanted to read, was the initial process of marriage, um, which of course over here, we tend to call it either dating or courting. Right. Um, but they don't separate um, courting from marriage. It's just one, what, what, the, uh, what the brother calls it, um, he calls it one plank on the platform of divine marriage. Mm. And I just wanted to read that part, being that we're talking about dating. Um, so this is, I don't know for anybody out there who might have the book, this is uh, page 116. Um, divine marriage and it reads divine marriage consists of three stages the first stage is divine pursuit which means that a man may pursue a woman or a woman a man during this stage the two individuals spend time getting to know each other apart from holding hands physical intimacy is not allowed if both individuals develop a mutual strong feeling, they enter into miko deshe, which is similar to engagement, mm. a period of sanctification that lasts a minimum of 70 days. <laughs> Physical intimacy is also not allowed at this stage. Once the couple enters into miko deshe, an announcement is made and the individuals are removed from the community of single brothers and sisters. This means that no one can pursue either of them, nor they anyone. During Miko Deshet, the couple must meet with the priest at least 10 times. The couple may attend some of the meetings together, and they may attend some of them alone. Um, there are several objectives in meeting with the priest. The first is for the individuals to learn the primacy of the presence of the creator in the development of the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, the priest ensures that the individuals understand the larger moral obligation, not only to each other, but to the community. Because the sessions are based on open and frank discussions, both individuals can discuss issues or concerns and the priest inquires into personal matters, including sex and fertility issues. Mm -hmm. Spiritual compatibility is emphasized over physical and emotional compatibility to ensure that the couple understands that once vows are made, the relationship is eternal. Mm -hmm. After these meetings, the priest determines if the individuals are ready. The period of Mikodeshek ends when the couple either gets married or ends the engagement. Yeah. And so with, with that said, one of the things that the sister noticed was that when it came to, for instance, with, with the dating, the dating element was no different than like, like what the brother Isaiah said, the dating element was no different than friendship. Right. Like it was legitimately a process of getting to know each other, like on the most important level of getting to know. Mm -hmm. And like he said, intercourse confuses things. Intercourse can, you know, throws everything off in a situation. You begin, it, it'll, it'll, it, it, it sets the kind of platform where you begin to read into things that may not even be there. Right, right, like, right. You might be compatible with this person on a sexual level, and it might be like, oh man, this is great, or this is whatever like that. She loves it, you love it, whatever like that. And now emotions get involved, like Isaiah said. 
Now you take those emotions and you're transposing them on top of this fictitious relationship that has not even blossomed yet. And now you're making relationship decisions on something that doesn't yet exist. Mm. And what comes out of that? Unwanted children. Yeah. Eventual um, hatred towards each other because you realize now you're in this relationship. Y'all, are, even if you separate, you have a child with each other, you're stuck with that person in some level or whatever like that. Now there's bitterness. Mm-hmm. Because the, the footwork wasn't done from the beginning. So whether we call it dating or whether we call it courting, divine, whatever, divine marriage, whatever have you, I don't think anybody can really conscientiously argue against that period of time in which the man and the woman is just friends. And they're literally going out, doing things together and establishing compatibility on the, on the level that actually matter. I mean, how often does a man and a woman in a marriage, how often do people have sex in a marriage? E- even if it's once a day, let's just say it's once a day. I don't know, half hour, hour, whatever the, whatever. what do you do for the other 23 hours? <laughs> Cause yeah, we, yeah, we're going to yeah, get busy for this half hour, this hour here. Yeah, we're going to do it. And done. Oh my God. And we done got up and got ourselves together, go to the wash or whatever like that. After that's over, <laughs> what do we now deal? What are we talking about for the rest of this time? Of any value? Let me just put it that way. That is real talk. That is the truth. It's interesting that you uh, say that, brother. I didn't mean to cut you off. If I right, did, yeah, but, um, <laughs> driving into work, um, sometimes I listen to the commentary on the radio. And um, up here in New York, they have a radio station, um, Hot 97. Uh. This is maybe like two or three days ago. And um, I usually don't listen to any radio. Like, I play music off my phone because I don't like so much the music on the radio. Right. Um, that's another conversation for another time. Yeah. But um, at the same time, they had a... Um, they had like a topic and they were saying uh, people close to or over 30 who either are married and or have children. What is the um, significance effects in your life? Like how, how, how much importance does it play in connection with everything else that you got going on? Right. And a lot of the older men, um, from what I was listening to, I didn't know, uh, it got pretty stupid, so I cut it off after a while. <laughs> but a lot of the older men were saying, um, although it holds importance, it ain't done often. And uh, they got too many other things on their plate that they got to do before they even get to uh even get to so it's, it's uh, pretty low on a totem pole and um i got called up he was like you got 12 kids hmm. he was like at this point it was like when all his kids and his wife you know they they i believe they were living together um and he was saying man that's the last thing on his mind he just wanted sleep right <laughs> you know what i mean so it's interesting that you said what you said because, um, you know, what what after that's done, and um, you know, you see a whole bunch of um, i.e. corny things on the internet, like oh, we doing this more than once, or but however long you do it, however many times you do it in a day, there's always going to be a set time where you got to either look at this person, be around this person, or see this person. Indeed, and. Uh, what are y'all going to do with that time? Which is why if you take time in the beginning to remove yourself away from that, figure out what exactly is going on emotionally, spiritually, physically, you can find you a good friend or find you more compatible things to do that to set yourself up for what you fill that other time with, whether it's good communication, 
positive energy, even if you're not talking at all, sitting in silence with somebody. You know, finding those things that y'all connect on outside of that, you know, is a good important. And like you said, a lot of people jump the gun. And what winds up happening is they figure out that they're not that compatible at all. Or their compatibility starts to change because uh, what they thought of as new and curious ain't, ain't so new and curious anymore. So exactly. now, you know, how do we, as, as people say, I've seen this one young lady on Facebook years ago. I'm not going to say her name. But um, she posted that, um, what was it? She said it's been a year and two months into her relationship with this guy. And she's bored. Now she's trying to, she posted any ideas of what you guys have to kind of spice up our relationship. Right. I'm like, it's only been a year and a couple months. <laughs> that ain't that much time at all to be trying to figure out how you want to spice things up if you're mm. that bored. Yeah. In my opinion, I'm sorry, no. I'm I'm lying. It wasn't even a year. I think she said it was only six months. And yeah, you, at you, that you. point, I'm looking like y'all done so much jumped the gun there that you didn't even build what I consider to be the actual relationship part. Right. You know what I mean, so now you're hurting. And that, like you said, you know, what does that lead to next? Which I lump it all into failure. You know, because that's Absolutely. that's. And, and a whole bunch of different things, you know what I mean, as you stated. So I like the point that you made. And um, it's good to kind of fill in those gaps with good communication and um, some more healthier approaches to uh, being connected to someone. Yeah, I mean, I mean, consider this. There's this, you know, sometimes I don't know if it's a myth. Or, or just I don't know, but th there's this there's this thing that has been said about so-called African Americans, so Black people just generally, and that is that they say, oh, you know, Black people are you know they're over sexualized, they you know they're you know they're known for this is what they do, and right. one of the things that I, I find interesting about that is that the people who have pushed that idea are the very people who used to forcibly make us populate with our women to breed more slaves. Right. Now, they'll say, yeah, yeah, they're, they're over-sexualized. That's all they want to do. Yeah, you kind of have your boot on our necks to do it. So, yeah, yeah. You know, women are always in the mood because <laughs> they're being trained to be always in the mood. And the men, are being forced to always be in the mood. So you have this thing where now, where over-sexualization has, has become almost expected mm. of our people. It's expected. So if I don't, if I, so if I have a woman and I don't put in three, four hours in the bed with her on one shot, I failed as a man. <laughs> That's not funny, but it is. No, no, but, but, that, but, but this is the, but these, but these are these, going back to what you said, Tamar, these, the, 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 these expectations Right, 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 right. <laughs> that we've been basically inherited. So now, you know, you started, you're, it's like you're fighting against the legacy. You're like, oh, man, how am I going to, I can't do four hours. That's insane. <laughs> like, 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 who does that? <laughs> I mean, I mean, so, you know, you, so you find yourself in these, these, these situations where, where intercourse has taken on a, a primal element in relationships where, we can't see past intercourse. Right. If intercourse is not the centerpiece of the discussion, then there's no discussion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can supersede that, the, the lack of intercourse, is if you take intercourse out of the centerpiece and put money in its place. Mm. Outside of intercourse and money, if they're not, if those two are not the centerpiece of the relationship, then there's no relationship. Which happens to also be um from what I've seen statistically, the highest reasons for divorce in America, financial and um, sexual um, obligations. Right. And, and that's not to say that these things are not important, but I think one of the reasons why, I mean, 
And it's so funny that you bring that up, Aki, that if if finances were an issue for why people, you know, get divorced, and if this were the case across the board, why didn't we see these incredible amounts of divorce amongst our people in the 1930s and 40s? Right. When it was it was Jim Crow, we none of us have money. You know, our women were scrubbing floors. Yeah. For some, for some white women, we were working the fields for some white men. We didn't have no money, but how were these marriages lasting 30, 40, 50, 60 years mm -hmm. with no money? Mm -hmm. The entire marriage is nothing but struggle. How are these things lasting? Because there were other things, other elements of the relationship that were already intact. So even if money fails, or mm -hmm. the intercourse fails. It's like, okay, whatever. But we still have something. Mm -hmm. You're my friend. I'm your friend. We still have a relationship. That's just money. It's important, but it's not important enough for us to throw away our friendship. Now, of course, our great-grandparents, they understood these concepts. But today... There's been, again, there's this primacy that has been placed on intercourse and, of course, with money, that now, if that's not a part of the discussion, then there is no discussion. And so now, when we start talking about dating, dating is not even a process anymore. It's an event. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I'm going on a date... What, what are we saying? We're saying that, okay, I'm going out with this female, or I'm gonna, or if you're a woman, I'm going out with this male, and we're already told these insane concepts of, oh yeah, don't give it up until after the third date. Yeah, right. What? That's, that's prostitution. Like, like three <laughs> dates? So we're gonna meet up three times, and after that third time, you feel comfortable to give me your pudenda. Right, 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 right. You feel comfortable with that? Right, and vice versa. These these insane concepts that we've inherited have created this you know, have have created this platform. So when we start talking about dating, dating no longer has value because what are we really doing? Are we really getting to know each other to establish a relationship, a friendship down the line, or is this just are we just dancing? We're for that third day. Right, we're, we're just dancing. It's a dance. You know, I'm fronting because I normally ain't trying to pay. I'm not. I'm normally not trying to buy no food for no woman. You're fronting because you're doing things that you normally wouldn't do for a man anyway. So we're sitting here fronting in order to get what we want within the next week. Mm -hmm. And after we obtain these things, there's no value going forward. Right. Because that was not the initial intention. I had no intention on having anything long term with you. I wanted to find out what was underneath that skirt. You want to know what was underneath my jeans. And now that we got that. So then, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. As Martin, as Martin Lawrence would say, peace. Right, right. <laughs> and just and just keep it moving. Right. And so the concept of dating has no value. It has no value because it's been devalued, you know, within the culture, not just in terms, but the culture itself has been devalued. You have women who don't see themselves obtaining anything of any value out of dating. Why? Because everything has already been given up in the first week. So you already know what to expect from this person. You don't know anything about them other than what's in their pocket and what's in their pants. There's no thrill. So you have a situation like the brother Isaiah brought up where a sister is like, hey, how can I get the spark back in my marriage? And they haven't even gotten to the one year mark. That's still quote unquote. That's that's still biblical in a, in a biblical sense. That's still the honeymoon, honeymoon right. period. Because remember, after a, a marriage, a man can't have any business for a whole year. For a whole year, yeah. He has to stay home with his wife and you know and make her happy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if so if everything went down the drain within the first year, it's like okay, what what happened here? What where did we go wrong? Right. We shouldn't even be having that conversation about you know you know sparking things back up. It's at least till at least ten years into the situation. Right. 
<laughs> but six months. Yeah. But again, but that scenario that the brother Isaiah gave is only indicative of, you know, of, of a systemic problem in our people's understanding of relationships. And it all starts. So forget about marriage. Yeah. All of this starts with the dating. And what is it that we're ex- what is it that we're expecting from dating? The institution itself, I think, has to be thrown out because what we're practicing as dating is not biblical courting. Right. Interesting. Yeah. And we're confused because these terms of we're confusing the terms and we're just saying, oh yeah, dating, whatever. But the scriptures are very specific about how you go about and you know dealing, you know, with each other using wisdom. The culture itself, and this is something I'll just make this brief that. A lot of people will say, well, well, scripture doesn't have no detailed examples of courting, so therefore yeah. it's not, you know, I don't, it's not biblical. Well, there's a lot of things that we do that's not specifically recorded in scripture. Scripture doesn't show any example of anybody wiping their behind after they use the toilet. <laughs> there's, no, there's no precept for that. Show All me right. a precept where it says, thou <laughs> shalt wipe the buttock. Right. <laughs> chapter is that? What book is that? Exactly. Wow. It's not there. There's a lot of things culturally that are not there because the law gives us room to expand on the culture of it. You cannot change the law, but you can change the application of it and the expression of it. And these, and that's where culture comes in. Yeah. How you express certain things. So certain things don't have to be mentioned. The scripture doesn't have to say when you wake up, fresh in your mouth, brush your teeth or whatever. It's it's a given. There's no culture that has to say yes. You should uh you should, you should brush your teeth. No, that's what you tell tell barbarians. But civilized people know that no, I, that that's a given. Let me clean that up. Let me go clean up what's going on down here. Whatever <laughs> like that. And so when we say that certain things are not in the it's not in the scripture. Again, there's a lot of things that are not in scripture that we do. What we're doing right now. Right. We're on camera. This could almost be looked at as witchcraft, <laughs> whatever. But, <laughs> but I mean, right? I mean, you know, so, so, you know, I mean, you're a witch. We're both wizards. I mean, it's like, like, what, uh, <laughs> but you see how ridiculous the narrative can get, right. you know. But that's what culture is. Culture is an expression of our laws. We have the laws. Now, how do we express it and move it forward in practical application every day? That's mm-hmm. how culture is born. So we don't have to have examples of something happening in scripture in order for it to be true. All we have to do is have the principles. Right. The principles will tell us that yes, you know, when uh, you know when when Proverbs thirty one says that this um, that this wise woman that it says that she considers a field right. and buys it. What is the operative term here? She's thoughtful. Considers, she considers. Yeah. What do we when you go out to purchase um whatever type of real estate or whatever like that, whether it's land, home or whatever like that, nobody rushes in and says, Okay, I have the money, let me go buy this house. No, I want to know, well, how old is the house? Who were the previous owners of this home? Mm-hmm. Has there any, has there been any water damage? Here, how is the roof? You're doing an assessment of the property before you even consider taking on the responsibility of that property. Now, how is now? Now, people will tell you, "Oh, yeah, that's smart business. Mm-hmm. That's wisdom." So, how much more than a woman saying she considers a man, All right? And then pursues it like I need. She, she needs to know, what is he about? I need to do an investigation on this. Mm-hmm. Or the brother, Yo, what is the sister about? I'm not jumping into nothing with her until I do an investigation. And, right. that, and, and that's ultimately what dating, is, the so-called dating according is. It is, an, it is an in-depth mutual investigation. Mm-hmm. I'm coming in to invest in this system. But before I before I invest my time and my life, I need to make sure that this sister or this house is worth it. Or are there some problems lurking in the background? Are there some electrical issues behind the wall that I need to know about? You need to know these things before you invest in that. 
And it's the same thing in a relationship. So when people say that courting or dating is not important, look at their background. All of them have failed marriages. Mm. All of them. They're letting you know that, yes, you didn't do your due diligence, so you went out and bought, you went out and bought like a vehicle. You went out and bought a lemon. Every time, you're buying lemons. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't do any research on the vehicle. You didn't have your you didn't have your man Tyrone come in and check the engine and check all these different things that let you know, yes, this is a good vehicle. Take that. Right. That's so when we start talking about divorces and marriage, all of these things, going back to what Isaiah said, all of these things equals what? It's all failure. And there's a reason why there's a failure because the methodology of what we consider to be dating, it's already been rigged to fail. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And I, and I like, I really, I really like the, the, the reading you did about how um, it was, a, it was a, a collaborative effort. So, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't that the, the man and woman are, were doing this thing in isolation. There were people that they were accountable to, which mm. sometimes, I mean, you, you know, you kind of hear that in the traditional church about having people that, accountability partners I'm talking about in traditional church. Um, I'm not sure if I really see that in on this side of believers, but I know it exists in the in the Christian community where they, they kind of have that. Also, when you were reading, it sounded like they were um, having a, a marriage counseling beforehand. You know what I'm saying? So that's a, you see Christians doing that. It's the same thing. Um, what I found interesting, though, mm -hmm. was, and you, and you read it, and I don't know if if you were shocked by it, um, but when it says when the man pursues or the woman, so I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't right. think that that was even because I kind of <clears throat> my understanding is that um, you know the male is the one that pursues. I think whether you believe, whether you're you know you consider yourself a believer or not, I think that's kind of it, well, it might be changing. I'm older, I don't know, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of the onus is on the the man to do the work. So is is that something that they practice where the woman will be chasing? And and I'm just curious, just right. a little off topic, what does that even look like, right? Because it wouldn't that be considered um, aggressive or managed, which I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily find that attractive. I'm just <laughs> that caught my right. head. No, and I and I think it I think it all it, it always depends on on how it's being done. So I don't yeah. like in the community, and I happen to know. Uh, quite a, a few brothers and sisters who actually are who live in that community. Yeah. When they talk about the process of um of pursuing with the woman, it's not like it's not like an aggressive pursuit. It's not like she's rolling up on him like you know rolling up on him like um uh in the Steve Harvey show. Remember the, the Lady of Rage, her character. Yeah. I think I forget her name. Just rolling up on a brother and be like, "Yo, what's up? You'll be going after together." Like, <laughs> I don't think it's that, but. But I think it's more of an inquiry. It's like, you know, a, a, of a woman, she might have an interest in a brother or whatever like that. She sees that, okay, either he's single or he might be, you know, obviously uh, polygamy might be an option in that, in their family. So she might look and find an interest in that brother. And she might say, okay, it might be in a position where she can have a conversation with this brother or whatever have you and say, hey, you know, um, and just converse like hey you know like what's your situation okay you know what i'm saying yeah but i don't think it's an, i don't think it's an aggressive you know her rolling up on a brother and like yo put him in the, in the headlines like you gonna be mine you right, right. <laughs> you, you know right. you know so yeah, I, yeah I, don't, I think that with um especially with that community they they, they they've They've done, they've, they, they've kind of done certain things that I believe is very uh, way ahead of the curve in the Israelite community. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Shaquat. Shaquat. He's going to time out. Yes, he's going to time out. Oh, yes. You know. Um, but, I, yeah, but I think that the, that the community, they're way ahead of the curve on certain um, on certain issues like that. Because their thing is, they don't, you know, especially again, and this is an issue of polygamy, but their, their thinking was that, listen, if we are going to practice polygamy, the only way polygamy works is if the wife has 
a significant say so in the situation. Mm. Otherwise, it's going to be a disaster waiting to happen. Mm. The man goes and gets another wife. The first wife is accepting it just to keep the peace, but right. she's looking for the first, the first um, a, a available um, opportunity to damage the relationship because she you knows she doesn't want it to begin with. Right, right. Because of how things was being done 30, 40 years ago in the community, they, th this whole process that they have now, it was built off of trial, you know, uh, uh, you know, um, trial and error. Mm -hmm. In the sixties, brothers was just taking sisters, and if a sister says, "Um, uh, are you with somebody? Are you married?" Whatever, brothers, you know, brothers used to say things like, "I'm married to God." Oh, wow. To to circumvent, you know, and they learned from trial and error when these sisters was like, "Hey, what the? <laughs> no, we're gonna, I'm gonna divorce you. You filthy, you know." And and they and through of course, through wisdom, they began to realize like no, what we're doing is we're whoring our sisters out by do, by doing going about doing it this way. So they had a meeting of the minds in the early seventies, what they called um in the community they called it um the uh, um the final consolidation of power, where they modified a lot of their older perceptions. And one of the things that they established is that no. If these sisters are going to, if they're, these sisters, they're, they're accepting polygamy because they know it's in the scriptures, but if they're going to accept it in practical terms, they have to be a willing participant in the establishing of it. Right, right. So the first wife has to be able to say, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I talked to the sister, mm, not really thinking she's really going to be a good fit for this marriage. She has to be able to have a say so. Otherwise, it's disaster waiting to happen. And so they had kind of, in a sense, uh, empowered these sisters in a sense where they now can say, okay, this, that, and the third, although they do acknowledge that the man is still the head, he's still right, right, the right. covering, but they have become Proverbs 31 type women that even though she acknowledged that her husband is the head, she's still out you know, purchasing property. She's out making things happen. You know, whatever like that. Submission doesn't mean servitude. Right. It means that he understands he's the CEO and she's the COO. All right. And now they can move forward. So, so yeah, it, it was when I first saw that that's how they were doing it over there. I'm like, wow, the sisters pursuing brothers, but it's <laughs> more of a the sisters inquiring, like, hey, you know, like, uh, especially if it's a single brother, like, hey, how you doing, whatever, like that. All. Like, what, what, what's your status? You know, I'm. And they just get to talking. So it's really just, in, you know, she's able to initiate the conversation as opposed to traditionally where the woman just sits there quietly and the man right, comes right, and says, right. hey, woman, how you doing? Right. You know, you telegraph the situation. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. Come here, woman. Like, it's, yeah, it's not that kind of a scenario over there. It's more the mm. man is still the man, but the woman is still the woman. And she's still able to move forward and she can inquire into certain things, whatever, because she has to be happy as well. Right, <laughs> and uh, ironically, this is what the sister didn't like about the um uh, the Islamic group that she had studied, mm. where they they practice polygamy, but <laughs> the women have absolutely no say. Mm. I, mean, when I say no say, nothing to say about it, mm, mm, mm. And, and that might be fine for the man, but it's not fine for the long term relationship. Right, you know. So I mean, it's again, it, it, it you know, it depends on the community. Certain communities have, you know, different ethics that they utilize to push certain um, cultural, whatever like that. But the community in um, Demona, Israel, according to this sister, she said that they are the best examples of that she's ever seen of a functional, um, not just polygamous um, uh, community, but just marriage. Period. And considering the fact that they haven't had a case, an on book case of divorce. In nearly 30 years. Mm. You know. Right. Something's happening. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah, did you want to say something? Say it again. Oh. I was saying, I, I was asking Isaiah if you wanted to say something. Okay. I, um, what, can you restate the, the initial um, the question? Yeah. No, I was just saying, I was just saying that I liked the, uh, the reading that he did from the book, and I was, what caught my attention was uh, specifically, um, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> that a woman or a man can pursue. And I was telling him that, like, you don't really hear that. That's kind of, uh, at least for my, for me coming up, I think now, like, women are a lot more aggressive, but I still, in my head, think, like, that's inappropriate for a woman to go up to a man. Um, so, but he was saying, but so that's what he was responding to was okay. that. You know, so, uh, with that, I think is, uh, it's within context. Um, situational. Um, I've been in situations where I've seen women go overboard. Right. And I think it's more so the way to yeah. I was in a situation where I seen a, a young woman, as he mentioned, the Steve Harvey show, I believe the uh, character that she was trying to get was uh, named Bullethead. Um, or was it Romeo? One of those. Anywho, she, uh, I've seen a, a, a young lady go and grab a guy and say, you know, what's up? This is what I want type of thing. Right. And I was like, yeah, that's a little rough. So, um, but I've also seen, you know, a woman go up and say, hey, you know, how you doing? You know, so I don't think there's, I don't know of a guideline where, you know, there's a uh, how to do it. I think the um, the manner in which you do it is more important right. if you're respectful or not. Um, it's kind of weird because, you know, nowadays, especially dealing with, you know, people in my age group, um, you know, especially with guys, you've seen it all the time. You see it all the time where a man will walk up. I've been in, um, you know, social events where the uh, opening uh, conversation is, is a guy grabbing a woman, or, you know, by the arm or by, right. um, you know, her various body parts, let's put it that <laughs> way, and, uh, you know, initiate a con conversation. And, you know, I've always looked like, you know, yeah, that's that's not my stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, right. But, um, so I can't. I I don't think it's it's a bad thing if a woman um, initiates a conversation. I think it's the manner in which she does, and if it's uh, expressing a sense <laughs> of um, what I call thirstiness. <laughs> <laughs> Although that term can even be uh directed to me multiple things so right. uh, you know so I, I decorum is a big aspect exactly yeah. so yeah. Uh, i'm sorry go ahead. No, go ahead so i was listening to the conversation and uh i wanted to ask a question of my own um as far as um dating gets concerned We've talked about um, standards and things that should uh, that uh, need to, that we we've talked about standards needing, needing to have a high uh, basis within these terms and getting back to uh, not only essence of what the term means but what are we going to do within them. So the question that I pose to all of us here, uh, I think we should kind of kind of express what those standards should be. Uh, what are your ideal standards right. for dating? Right. You said for courting or dating? Well, I guess uh, we can well, like... let's, let's open it up. So both, if there's a separation between the two. Um, if there is a separation between the two, what is that separation? Um, and what are the standards for them? Cause we, I'm not putting marriage in that in that because we we're not yeah. necessarily talking about marriage right, right, right. Yeah. in these various phases of understanding who they are themselves and who the other person is. All right. Yeah. So I, I um I'll just jump in. I think because dating is just the the universal word um that people can kind of vibe with. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say um like I said earlier, just taking that opportunity to to sort of learn yourself and learn what type of person you would even be interested in, even on a friendship level. Um, and then 
this is new understanding because the whole courting thing, I, I, I've actually been asking about this for years because I've never, I think this is the first conversation I've had where there was like an example that I could pull from, right? People, but then, you know, I don't see a lot of classes. I'm not saying that they don't do it, but we don't see a lot of classes teaching this on Shabbat, whatever, you know, or Bible studies talking about these different things um, that I've witnessed. So I would say just to that, to that extent, I actually, like I said, I like that example um, of the brothers and sisters in Demona that they use because it's a collab where it's a community. Like I really am, uh, I love the idea of community and not in no, in no vague, like, oh yeah, you're my brother, you're my sister. I mean, for real, like if we need each other or if we don't need each other, we just come and be with each other just in, in a supportive role. So uh, I think, especially, and I think that that's our culture anyway. I think you look in the Torah, like, or even just period, it's not period. You, we weren't, the, the whole idea of individualism is another thing that I think is killing us. Like, everything is done in isolation. So, whereas I think, um, uh, Zim Lai, you was talking earlier about in the 1930s about our, our marriages lasting for some for X amount of years, but we had to sort of deal with each other. You had to go to a black doctor, you had to go to a black, um, uh, um, uh, uh, supermarket, you know what I'm saying? You kind of had to deal with each other. I think that made organic communities con uh, uh, exist even even on this side of our, you know, captivity. Um, but I think because we not, we're so spread apart now, even if we're not spread apart, we're spread apart in our mind. We've not already said, I'm not the same as this person or we don't have anything in common. Um, and I think those things allow for dating to be whatever you personally think it is. You know what I'm saying? I can, you know, I can personally do whatever I want to because who gonna, who gonna check me, boo? Or who gonna, <laughs> who gonna stop me? <laughs> who gonna stop me? Who gonna tell me not, not to do that? And so, um, right. I think that's, that's what's different. But I think that, th I think that if, if that community, and it don't gotta be nobody dramatic, I mean, even if we were, if we have our mothers or fathers or aunties around or uncles around to say, like you said, Isaiah, Isaiah your, your uncle was kind of like, let's run around and, and talk to people, you know, but not that he meant, meant any harm um, in that, but if we had somebody that would either kind of have counteracted what he said, mm -hmm. to say, well, that's cool, but you should also consider this, this way of, of, um, of looking at women. If we had some kind of balance, I think we don't have any balance. And, and then when we do hear something that is against what society says, we automatically look at that as wrong, as opposed to looking at what society is teaching is wrong. We, like our outlook is just totally messed up. But I think, I, I'm, I don't want to be long-winded on, on the question, but I do think that um, that courting is definitely like step one of what could potentially be marriage. In fact, I was, um, <laughs> I was, uh, I was approached um, maybe six, months ago yeah about this whole courting thing and i was new to it but the husband approached me right he's married but the husband approached me first okay and um then when i asked him about his wife and i know of i know them they're cool they're good people is whatever but so now in hindsight like she, maybe she should have been the one i don't know but anyway um uh but when, when i was talking to him he was talking about it was uh, step by step, and he tried to, you know, explain the whole thing to me. So I at least appreciated him coming correct, like he came correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And listen to different things, and this, this, this. You know, we obviously didn't enter into it, but I appreciated him showing me something different than what I didn't seen. When I've seen brothers that have confessed that they wife don't like it, but they be all around the country moving around, and they can pick up somebody, and she don't have no say in it. Right. So, um, that's more or less talking about the polygamy thing, but I'm just talking about the whole courting process. I think it needs to be defined. And um, and I would, again, I would just say that I, I agree. Dating is exploratory. You know, maybe you're going to be my friend forever. Uh, courting is specifically, I like you in a way that I want to be with you. And I think, too, Zebulon, you read where uh, the priest is uh, emphasizing the importance of emotional connection and also, you know, because physical connection is cool, like you said. But if I can't fully expose myself in a way that is uh, internally naked, then the physical nakedness is, is, is within the way anyway. You know what I'm saying? So right. if you don't have those things, and then also the importance, like the priest emphasizing the importance of marriage is something too that, of course, we don't see that kind of fall off. I mean, even people in the so-called truth, 
that was married, they ain't even married no more. So you see a right. lot of, uh, but I think that, I think that happened because things happen in isolation and uh, it's not a lot of people willing to, I think, have conversations and, and check things that are not, that are harmful. I'm not, not, not necessarily biblical because they might be biblical, but they, maybe they're harmful to the community. You know what I'm saying? And so reconsider those things. So anyway, but shout out to the community in Demona. I'm, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think that one of the, now mind you, a lot of the, like the stuff that I was reading uh, pertaining to um, uh, what they refer to as divine marriage and the whole courting process, a lot of, there, there was actually a lot of Israelites who were adamantly opposed to it. Mm. Not in the community, but in the right. outer Israelite uh, community at large, were like, oh, who, who is he to set up rules like that? He, he, he's not the Messiah. Like, like, well, like whoa, 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 wait a minute. Right. We just came out of American niggerisms. <laughs> and nobody had a complaint about that. Right. No one had a complaint about a man coming to a woman and saying, listen, I want to get to know you. I want to whatever. And not and not even going and approaching her family. All right. The first thing I should be saying is, do you have brothers? Is your father still alive? Yeah. Yeah. I would like to converse with your father. Right. Because before I even approach you, I have to figure, I have to find out if the father would even consider me worthy mm -hmm. to be conversing with you. That's the now that's biblical. Right. And it goes and again it goes back to the idea of community. So the people who are opposed to what they were doing over there in Demona, you have to look at what they were in opposition to. Because when you look at what they had, marriage-wise, it's a, like the brother Isaiah said, it's a, it was a complete failure. What, like our perception of marriage here in America is that of complete lunacy and failure. And what Israelites have done, and I'm not saying that you know, the elders over the past few decades, they did the best they could. They they led us the best that they could with yeah. what they had. But a lot of our elders, and even still many of us, what we're trying to do, we're trying to hold on to Eurocentric values and find Hebraic values that we can infuse or graft into it to legitimize the insanity. So the infrastructure of marriage and dating that we learned from our captors was a broken system to begin with. This is the reason why the white woman was uprising against him in the late 1800s. The women's lit because white men were really abusing and, <laughs> and disrespecting their women. So they're rising up like, hey, listen, we, we're not animals. We're, you know, we're not like the Negroes, but we're people. <laughs> you know? All right. And so they're rising up against these things, but these are the same infrastructures that we have inherited from them. And now we're trying, so instead of us saying, you know what, let's discard of it all together and start from scratch, we're, many of us are holding on to these things and just trying to Hebraicize it. Mm. You know, you can wrap, listen, you can, you, can wrap a, you can wrap a pig with a turban, it's still a pig. Right. It's not a Hebrew pig, it's a pig. So, <laughs> and, and, and so I think that, with, you know, again, with the issue of dating, that there has to be, like, what, you know, the first thing that has to be established is order. We talk about community. We talk about having the necessity of going and finding out who is this woman's male representative, who is her head, who is her covering, whether it's her brothers, whether it's her father, whoever. But she has some type of covering or some type of authority that I have to come to before I even have a conversation with you out of respect for your house and, you, and, and, and your family. Once we get past that, now we got to start talking about, okay, what, what is our goal in this process? Like, what, right. what are we dating for? For, right. Like, and, and let's not and let's not say these vague, make these vague statements like, oh no, you know, we're dating so that you know we can eventually be married. Well, marriage also doesn't have any real value anymore in this country. So even that has to be reevaluated. But mm. what do we what are we really seeking for in this process? 
am I looking to be married? Because some like you know, some brothers and sisters, they don't want to be married. They like the idea of marriage. Right. Right. Because they just don't want to be alone. Exactly. And so the conversation has to go to this process of dating, it has to be for the for the, the initial purpose of friendship. There has to be some type of intimacy between us that goes up, above and beyond sexual. I need to know that you are my friend. That anything that is going on in my in, in my mind or my heart, that I can conf I can confide in you and spill all of my my dreams and my mm -hmm. effort, everything out. And because I know that you are going to step in and say, no doubt, I'm going to help you. I'm yeah. going to help me. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. I'm going to help you. And vice versa. These, yeah. This has, so the, the 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 principles have to. Sorry, sorry, sorry. One one second. Sure. Well. Okay. I apologize. She's being she's being a little ramp on this. Um. Okay. But um. So yeah, so like there's, there's there's certain principles, like the ones like even with the ones that we were reading in the um out of this book, there's certain principles that have to be um that has to be addressed. There has to be what is the purpose of the marriage? I mean the purpose of the courting. And once there's a purpose established, we have you know that, that, that these individuals have to be willing to take the time, right? Six months, right. a year. Because again, now we might say, oh, that's a long time to be cold or whatever like that. But remember, it's not. idealistically, the marriage is going to be for the next 50 or 60 years. So, so the question, of course, is do I sacrifice this year in order to get a good 50 in return? I know that's right. Oh. And, and I believe that when we put it in, the, in in that framework, that one year, that one year doesn't sound like a whole lot of time. Then, Shaquan, my apologies, because mm -hmm. she's doing it deliberately now. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, she, oh boy, um, yeah. So, um, I've lost my train of thought, but yeah, so. You know that that the process of just having a year, uh, um, a, 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 um, six months, a year, a year and a half, or whatever amount of time that it takes. Again, you have the rest of your life on the line for this relationship. The rest of your life and, and now, because we live in a society that that doesn't promote long marriages. When we see someone married for twenty years, we celebrate like, oh wow, yeah, twenty years—that's a long time. Like, right? No, not really. That's not, that's not a lot of time to be married. That's one. You, you met the woman that when you were 20, you're 40. That's, you're still young. Mm -hmm. So when you see people that's been married for 50, 60, 70 years or whatever, that's the type of time that you are invested in. So it would be cool to spend as much time with that other person getting to know them. Mm -hmm. No intercourse. Mm -hmm. Which shouldn't be a problem because... You got sisters that, that that brag about the fact that, oh, yeah, you know, I, I ain't been with nobody in three years. Okay, well, continue for another year. What's the big, what's the big deal? Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Keep yourself chast. Same thing with the brothers. Keep yourself chast. Look at each other as brother and sister. Not literally, but in the sense that it is a relationship that we're just getting to know each other. The compatibility. Compatibility is something that you see over time. <laughs> over long periods of time. I learned that from my youth when I used to play baseball. I was a, I'm a baseball player in my youth. And that is that when you when you bring new players to a team, it takes a long period of time for that team to gel around each other and to become winners. It takes time if you're going to invest in that championship. And, it's, and for me, it's the same thing in, in a relationship, it takes a lot of time because again, sacrifice that one year 
or you're going to sacrifice the next 20. Mm. You pay now or pay later. Right. <laughs> pay now. Straight because up. At least, because because what with the worst case scenario, after that, that year, you realize that you're not really, you know, the other not really compatible or you're compatible, but eh, it's just not enough to where you can go forward. You've only lost a year. Mm. Whereas you get into this relationship and now you've been in this relationship for a long period of time. Now you've wasted 20 years and now have to start all over because you didn't learn the first lesson. Right. So we can't have a discussion about marriage unless we have a discussion about courting. And I think that until we get back to courting, we can continue to expect what Brother Isaiah said. We can continue to expect failure. Yeah. The, um, I like that. I like the, the whole the, the commentary about the, the, the time thing because I it's a similar thought process. Um, this is not the same thing, but it's, it reminded me of this, that, you know, we talk about being healthy and the people will say, you know, um, change your diet or you know uh eat differently and people would be like i can't it costs too much i can't buy them organic strawberries they fall out <laughs> but if you understood how much it costs for I'm, I'm, guilty, I'm guilty of that but if you know how much it costs to be afflicted and to bother, like i'm diabetic so if you know what it's like to, to like i have insurance but if i didn't a bottle of insulin is like three hundred seven dollars so either way you pay so you pay now you're gonna pay later but either way you're gonna pay <laughs> So anyway, that just it reminded me of that, and I think that's that's the wisdom that um we need that we need to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, if I, you know, not that I would do things differently, because I, I I've learned a lot through doing stuff the wrong way. But once we realize what we've done, and uh, to say something about it, to just share, like you know, um, which, which is what I think that that we try to do at least on this platform is to not come off as if we hadn't done you know, done anything that was bad or, you know, I think, I would think, I would eventually say that everything that we share is because we experienced it or we knew somebody that went through it. So people yeah. often um, make it seem like experience is not a good teacher, but for some people it is. Some people need to kind of learn the hard way. Um, but it's, it's only a, it's only a bad thing if you don't learn from your lessons. If you keep doing the same thing over and over again, then you kind of, kind of like it. The lunacy, like you call it, you kind of like being a lunatic. So I right. think that's what the platform is, is, um, at least, at least trying to do, and I hope people, you know, at least take it for that, and definitely, you know, keep, continue the conversation. I, I would love to see, like I keep saying, I've been waiting for I don't know how long for somebody to do something on courting or any type of beforehand, because I, I've been uh, um, someone who have has heard like the after math. Like I know sisters right now who crying about their husbands. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> and I can't do nothing. I can say well. I don't know, but I can't really help, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of the work needs to be had, be done on the front end, at least with sharing, at least saying something about what sh what you should or sh you know, shouldn't do. So mm -hmm. um, Isaiah, did you want to add something? I know you asked the question, but did you have some thoughts you wanted to add? I have a lot of thoughts. Okay, well. <laughs> um, I'm going to try not to be long-winded. Um, so answering my own question, I do feel that there standards for the various forms of relationships. Um, I don't think dating and courting are the same things. I think they're, they're within the same realm as far as being committed to someone, right? Um, taking it back to a meme I've seen on Facebook, it was a post um, of, uh, I guess it was like a young lady made this post and she was basically saying, um, you know, a, 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 a position that was posed to her about dating. And the position was, if we're dating, are you going to remain faithful? And the idea was faithful to what? There's no commitment. So um, to me, I think dating is solely getting to know someone mm -hmm. on a... Um, uh, understanding of who they are, understanding of who you are, understanding that y'all are compatible. I think uh, courting is taking that hit 
and applying it to see if there is any cause and effect. See if that um that if is going to withstand. It's kind of like a mathematic problem, you know. Um, the if and when, you know, if this happens, or coding. If this happens, then this. When this happens, then that. Kind of seeing or testing the waters of that um that that, that compatibility. Um, we're talking about time limits. I've once stated, um to a few people that I've uh, talked to. For me, um, I take that courting position and I um, extend it past a year, actually. Um, I say a good time, maybe a year and a half, two years even, to see if y'all are, 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 are linked, to see if you can, you know, let time you know, help you understand who that person is. And I'm not going to say that those are definite hard setting time periods. I mean, things happen earlier, things happen later. But the more investigation you do within a person, the easier it is to see if y'all can work on that next level, which ideally you know, that last one will be marriage. Because that's, uh, I know you said about 50 years, but depending on the lifespan, that's until uh, somebody dies. Right, right, right. It's the age of saying to death do us part. So, I mean, theoretically, it should be until someone demises or reach their point of demise. Um, so standards being, um, you know, setting what you find to be, you know, socially acceptable as far as attitude, as far as religion, as far as... Um, uh, how well y'all connect as far as what do you feel is fun activities. All of those things, you know, it's the reason why you go out on quote-unquote dates. Right. Like, you know, you put yourself in position to say, do I like this person's company when I am going through this? When I'm experiencing joy, when I'm experiencing fear. Um, Tamar um, made the statement of being naked. Not physically, right. yeah. spiritually. Um, mm -hmm. You know, am I able to disclose or expose myself in this way towards you, and how are you receptive of it? Um, right. You know, coming from a standpoint of not and being transparent—that's a good way. That's within that courting phase. You know, you right. start to expose yourself. You start to become your true you and seeing if that person can accept that. And hopefully that person will be upfront about it. But the ideal of courting is to be as transparent as possible with that other person to see if those situations um, can be walked over. Once y'all have decided that it works, y'all have applied that if and when situation and y'all like the outcomes of it, then you know, I guess marriage to be acceptable, but um, you know, it's 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 interesting when you apply that. A lot of times we skip over or you're in the dating phase applying if and when, and sometimes it doesn't always work out right. because you know a person doesn't want to have to deal with that. Matter of fact, um, Tamar, I'm going to bring up a conversation that we've had off air. Um, hopefully you don't mind. Tamar posed a question one time. We were talking about random stuff. And um, the question was, uh, when you call somebody or you hit somebody up, text them or whatever, and you say, how was your day? Right. right? Are you really willing to hear how that person's day was? Do you really <laughs> want to know how they feel at right. that present moment? <laughs> you know, right. um, exactly. <laughs> A lot of times we're in that dating phase, applying if and ones, and um, focusing on the other person and not focusing on ourselves even, or not finding that balance of focus. And we don't really want to hear that. Well, what we appear to do. <laughs> nonsense. I, um, I seen someone, I forgot if it was on TV or something, but the person was talking about an issue and uh, the other person responded that that's nonsense. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? But apparently that other person felt deeply about it. 
Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? So people are in a dating phase. And, you know, asking these real, really concise questions, but getting real broad outcomes, and they're not digging deeper. They're not investigating. So dating to me is like investigating. Indeed. I mean, Courtney is taking that, that, that deeper investigation and applying the evidence that you found, like a court case. Mm-hmm. You know, have different levels of things. When a lawyer gets information, they make a deposition, I think it's called, for more information to come in and say, okay, now we have exhibits A, B, and C. Now let's see if we can paint this picture or put this right. together. Dating is finding out what that evidence is. Courting is applying that that evidence to see what picture you get and seeing if you like it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, marriage is, you know, dealing with all of that. You know what I mean? Right. And it's fullness. But I think you have to go through each of these phases to find out what that fullness is. And we we skip over, we skip over a lot of portions and just kind of, kind of get to the gritty. Right. Without experiencing the other person. Truly experiencing. Because a lot of people post experience and another person is, um, you know, having some type of intimate relationship with them. That, right. That don't work. That don't work. Apparently it don't work because, uh, Divorce rates are really high, and uh, you know we see a whole bunch of negative outcomes on Facebook every day. Indeed. <laughs> so um, I know we. I'm. I'm. I'm just going to roll into my closing thoughts because I know we're getting kind of close here to the time to shut off. So um, solution and um, end of statement uh, are kind of going to be uh, jammed in. Um, solution will be slow down. I just want to get to know you. Um, I believe that's the first part of a, of a lyric. I'm not going to sing the rest because it don't apply. Right. But um, get a chance to know the person and uh, keep things slow because uh, that that chance to simmer, it's like making a pot of soup. You want to let it simmer so all the flavors are kind of get, uh, get uh, intertwined and intermingled. With it. And, um, you know, move at a pace that's not only comfortable, for you and a partner, but um, but uh, produces longevity, cause that's kind of what we need as a culture, cause everything is too uh microwavable and instant. That's and right. The things it comes out nasty. You know what I mean. So um, my solution for that would be to slow down. Um, you know, consider the cost, and um understand what forever means. Absolutely. I'm going to end it there. I'm going to let everybody else get a chance to go ahead and talk. Debbie Lyon? Okay, uh, uh, I think he pretty much wrapped up um, my, uh, most of my sentiment as well. Um, but I will just end with this, that going back to what, uh, the issue of community that uh, Sister Tamar that you brought out earlier about the importance of, of community, I think that when you're oper- when courting, when dating is operating out of community, it's much more successful because normally, if you're in a community, the woman that you, or, or, or if you're a man, the woman that you have a desire to court, or the woman who has a desire to court this man, they've known each other for years prior right. because they came up in the same community. So we knew each other when we were 10. We knew each other when we were 12, 14, 15. So when, when, the community, when a tight-knit community grows and cultivates these various relationships, by the time the man has an interest in this particular system, a lot of the groundwork has been laid already. Mm-hmm. Because I already know your family. I, I know your ethics. I know how you were raised because my parents and your parents we're best friends, the other community, whatever like that. We grew up together. So I already know. So a lot of a lot of the, the foundation of what would be needed to initiate any type of relationship has already the groundwork has already been laid. We've already witnessed the groundwork from our youth up. So now as we move forward, now we can say, okay, we don't have to bust our heads about those foundational issues, because that's already been done years ago. Now let's move forward as Adults, and I think that 
when there's a community involved, relationships tend to last longer because there's more accountability now. All right. Your father, if your father knows that I'm slacking in some area, he's not going to be like, hey, well, that's not my business. That's, that's <laughs> you and my daughter. He's going to roll up on you and say, uh, son, right. what are you doing? Tighten up. <laughs> Whatever like that. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> and vice versa, you know what I'm saying? My mother might come to you and say, uh, yeah, listen, uh, sis, yeah. uh, you need to get it together. <laughs> Whatever, so on and so forth. So when you have accountability, accountability actually helps for a relationship to actually flourish because now it's not just us doing our thing on the side, like, hey, ain't nobody else's business, what we do. It's like, no, it's everybody's <laughs> business now. And if I'm a piece of crap, they're going to call me on it. Let it be known. That's right. And, you know, I swear. and the same thing. The sisters are going to roll up on you and <laughs> say, hey, what are you doing? You know, why you hurt my brother? Whatever the case may be. So, right. So I think that, you know, that courting, in that sense, these things, they flourish better when it is an, a, real, when it's a real community. But if we're in a wilderness, like what we experience in America, this is like a wilderness. Yeah. Like, hey, like, like Jay-Z said, there's no church in the wild. <laughs> when you're in the wild, there's no, it's like, it's do whatever you want to do, however you feel, and that's disaster. That's right. So I just wanted to just say, you know, community, of course, and maybe that's something that we'll get into on another, on another show, but community is definitely important for the flourishing of any um, courting or dating scenario. Yeah, that's good. And I, I would just, I'll just add uh, briefly, just um, um, uh, because it's, it's all about, you know, connection and personal connections. Just, I would just say, uh, wherever you are currently, like wh whatever your hobbies are, like, you know, I'm just saying somebody who, who might be wanting to, who might have a question like, well, how do I, how do I find somebody with similar interests, for example? Um, you know, looking around the, the people that you're currently around, uh, maybe there's people that's in your community or um, uh, that, you, that might, you might be interested in, they might share the same sort of like interests. Because I think that's something that is very important. Because it's one thing, because I, I, think, I think dating is now online and all that other stuff, but, I, and I wouldn't say anything against that, but I would just say that if, if the goal is to find meaningful relationships where there's actual internal connection, then personal presence is everything. Going places, um, especially in the dating period where you're sort of like figuring out who's who. Uh, being open, being open to, to people who might be in that kind of environment, just as a just as an easy way to just cut cut to the chase. Like, do you like going to the opera? Yeah or nay? You know what I'm saying? Right. You don't know because they're they're right next to you in the seat. <laughs> right, right. No, but, <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's all I wanted to add. But I, I love the discussion. I learned a lot. Um, I learned a lot, and I'm glad we finally had a chance to talk about it. So, uh, we will. Well, I, I think so. I, next week I'll be traveling, so I I won't be on. Um, but uh, there might be a brief pause. But we'll be back again the next, the following Sabbath, if the Most High will, on the 29th. Um, but I'll, we can confirm shortly uh, in the inbox. But anyway, grace, peace, everybody. We love you. And until next time, have a good day. Hallelujah. Shalom. 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 Peace.